vocabulary learning strategies. Why students need to have word learning strategies? The first reason is that there are too many words to teach them all, so self-learning is necessary. Second, encountering new words in text is the norm, not the exception, so self-learning is inevitable. Number three, familiar words are often used with other less familiar meanings, such as wrong, so uh, more words to learn. Number four, students should take increasing responsibility for all aspects of their learning, including vocabulary growth. So here are some uh, research findings about uh, learning to cope with new words. First, teaching students to use context clues improve their use of context, and teaching students about word parts improves their use of word parts. And students can be taught to use word parts and context in combination. And number four, comprehension instruction that includes strategies for dealing with unfamiliar words can improve comprehension. And there are a lot more research indicates that teaching students how to learn vocabulary has some beneficial impact on their vocabulary acquisition. There's an adage that goes, give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So as a teacher, since there are so many words to cover in the class and the class time is always limited, so do not teach all vocabulary. Teach students how to learn vocabulary is much more important and have a lasting effect on their learning. In the following presentation, I'm going to list 68 different vocabulary learning strategies. Among the first strategy category is cognitive strategies. The first uh, one is analyzing speech pronunciation, spelling, multiple meaning, morphological and syntactical properties, such as affixes, prefix, and suffix. And the second is how the words combine with other, other words, such as using collocation. The second category is metacognitive strategies, including centering learning, for example, self-initiation of learning, selective attention to words that need to be uh, learned. Number four is set goals for learning. And number five, note-taking. For example, uh, it can be meaning-oriented note-taking or usage-oriented meaning uh, note-taking, such as uh, jot down the whole sentence that include the words you want to learn. Or it can be both, including meaning-oriented and usage-oriented note-taking strategies. The next one is evaluating learning. Evaluate how well you learn the vocabulary. The next one is compensation strategies including guessing from context intelligently. It also includes two parts. The first is use backward knowledge. It means um, guessing the word from the top-down approach by, for example, thinking about the main gist of the reading and then guess intelligently what the keywords or what the unknown words may be like. The second is use linguistic clues, for example, using the prefix to determine if the vocabulary is, has positive or negative meanings. Number eight, overcoming limitations by, for example, choosing more appropriate reading materials so that the vocabulary load is limited and is more 
uh, appropriate. Number nine, consulting dictionary. For example, using monolingual dictionary or bilingual dictionary. The next strategy is social strategies. The first one is asking questions. For example, ask quest questions about L1 translation or ask the teacher to paraphrase the unknown words in simpler English or asking teachers to make sentences for the unknown words. And number 11 is to cooperating with peers. For example, uh, organize a vocabulary study group so students uh, can help each other to uh, acquire more vocabulary. Number 12 is empathizing. Try to uh, show support and receiving help or encouragement from peers. The next is effective strategies. Uh, for example, lowering anxiety by having a uh, deep breath or having some uh, self-encouragement uh, moment when uh, students feel uh, frustrated. Number 14 is encouraging, encouraging uh, oneself to uh, overcome the learning hurdles uh, step by step. The next category is memorization strategies, including 15, creating mental images of the unknown words. Uh, 16, applying images and sounds together to facilitate learning. 17, reviewing uh, with oral or visual repetition. 18, employing action, act out the words to uh, increase the uh, memory. Number eight, 19, memorize words, initial letters. So making initial letters uh, as a cue to recall the pronunciation or spelling. The next strategy is, is monitoring strategies. Include number 20, be aware of the progress in vocabulary learning. and. 21, testing uh, one's, uh, oneself with word test. And 22, use space word practice. So uh, it can be dividing the learning task into uh, smaller chunks, or it can be review of the learned words. Uh, for example, once a week or once a month. The next category of strategy is consolidation strategies. It includes 23, make drawings of words. Number four, 24, make word cards. 25, make word list or make word posters. 27, make word chains. 28, make word pyramids. 29, make alphabet exercise. 30, make and fill in closed tests. 31, note down pronunciation. 32, read aloud and imagine. 33, practice spelling morphemes. 34, analyze pre and suffix. 35, make mind maps of or webs. 36. Make crosswords. 37. Make associations, synonyms, and antonyms. 38. Build sentences. 39. Rhyme. 40. Make thematic list. Add adjectives. 41. Make grammatical list uh, or word classes. 42. Sing or rap. 43. Make small talks on the words you want to learn. 44. Narrate a story with new words. 45. Make stories poems with uh, new words. 47. Play games such as dominoes, handmans, 
odd man out, scramble or bingo. Forty-eight, fill the blackboard. Forty-nine, make model sentences. Fifty, make definitions. Fifty-one, use thesaurus. Fifty-two, connect words with already known words. Fifty-three, associate word with other tongue. Forty fifty-four, draw a semantic map. Fifty-five, online tools, for example, using quizzes, vocabulary.com or Yougalish concordancer. Fifty-six, vocabulary app. Fifty-seven, search answers on Google questions about vocabulary. Fifty-eight. Use English labels for objects. Fifty-nine dictation. Sixty picture description. Sixty-one connect words with personal experiences. Sixty-two learn the words with an idiom together. Sixty-three say new words aloud when studying. Sixty-four. Group words together to study them. Sixty-five. Listen to tape of words list. Sixty-six. Verbal repetition. Sixty-seven. Oral repetition. Sixty-eight. Written repetition. So with all the list of word learning strategies,、uh, as a teacher,、uh, there are things you have to. Uh, take into consideration when、uh, trying to help students develop their、uh, learning strategies. First, make pro- pro- motivation a prime concern, and second, explain why, when, how to use the strategies, and provide lots of collaborative discussion of the thinking behind the strategies, and model the use of the strategies. Number five. Extend practice, encouragement, and feedback over considerable time, and gradual transfer of responsibility to students. Seven, prompt and encourage application across the curriculum. So,、uh, developing a learning strategy takes time, and so before a student or a teachers choose. The kind of strategies that's appropriate for the students,、uh, you have to consider the motivation of the students. What kind of strategies can best、uh, fit the students' motivation and needs, and tell them the reasons behind using the particular strategies. And constant, continuous、uh, practice and、uh, encouragement is also very important to the success of. Uh, using vocabulary learning strategies because it's a long-term、uh, development of habit. When it comes to motivation,、uh, there are major two types of motivation. One is intrinsic motivation. It means that、uh, you do things、uh, because of your inner Satisfaction, or because of the sense of fulfillment, and for extrinsic motivation, it means you are motivated to do things because of the external reward. For example, higher score on GPT or TOEFL test, or receiving a higher salary because of your uh, English uh, proficiency. So those are external、um, incentive, and we can divide people into maybe four categories. For some people, they are both、uh, intrinsically and extrinsically motivated to learn English or vocabulary. So for those、uh, students in this category,、uh, what teachers need to do is to allow them to be an Autonomous learner because they know they are highly、uh, driven by、uh, their motivation. So, whatever they 
whatever strategies they use uh, can be successful. And another opposite type of learners are those who are neither intrinsically or extrinsically motivated. And for these type of uh, learners, I think the first thing is to make them uh, be motivated. Okay, so a lot of strategies are related to drills, and I think those uh, drill driven drills oriented strategies may not work very well for those who do not have any motivation to learn English. So in this category, uh, making the learning fun and interesting, choosing more um, authentic and interesting materials instead of focusing on vocabulary should be more appropriate for these group of students. And for the other two types of uh, students, I think uh, if they are more intrinsic, uh, intrinsic oriented, but they don't care about the in extrinsic rewards, I think for these type of students, uh, maybe in the short term they might ignore the test in the school. Okay, but. In the long run, with the intrinsic motivation and appropriate uh, vocabulary strategies used, uh, in the long run, these students can accumulate uh, pretty good uh, proficiency. But for those students who has extrinsic motivation but they lack intrinsic motivation, I think a test-driven um, drills and exercise related to uh, vocabulary strategies could be uh, quite useful. So let's go back to the earlier quotation. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. So in this quotation, let's uh, think outside the box. What is missing in this quotation is that the man to whom one brings fish or the learning of fishing is totally absent from the sentence. So in this sentence, we don't know, we don't have idea about the man who received the fish or received the, the learning or teaching. And so don't give us fish. Don't teach us how to fish. Ask us if we eat fish. So this is what is missing in the quotation. So without knowing the person's uh, motivation about fish, it's really um, not that uh, reasonable to just uh, focus our attention on providing them things that they may not need or want. So what does the student want? What does the student think? And how can we make students want to learn? Or in other words, how can we make a person want to eat fish? Should be the first priority when it comes to uh, teaching uh, fishing or teaching any subject or any skills. In Chinese Kung Fu, the best uh, strategy is called Wu Zhao Sheng Yu Zhao. Uh, English means assume formlessness. Uh, it means that the best strategy is the best strategy is no strategy at all. So when it comes to learning English, I think um, if we as a teacher can encourage students to do extensive listening, listening, watching movies listening to songs, podcasts, or news, or extensive speaking. For example, uh, if the environment doesn't provide a lot of speaking opportunities, learners can have self-talking uh, habit. And extensive reading also includes uh, listening to audio books. And extensive writing, such as keeping diary or blogs in English. So if the teachers can foster students' development of English through extensive 
authentic usage of the language. I think the vocabulary will be built up naturally and without intentional、uh, using of any particular strategies. But students can develop very solid, large vocabulary size without any problem. So when it comes to、uh, selection of different types of vocabulary learning strategies, I think one important concept is about your philosophy of learning and teaching. So some people、uh, treat learning English like taking taking vitamins. So English is viewed as a an independent subject to learn. So if your philosophy is is about this. And role learning using work hard, dictionary, cinema, Anthony, or quizzes might be、um, what you choose. But for a lot of students who are not intrinsically or extrinsically motivated,、uh, the vitamin approach might not work for them very well. So there's another type of approach in the spectrum that is using.、Uh, Extensive listening, speaking, reading, and writing in authentic、uh, context and for authentic、uh, purpose of using the language. I think through this approach, it's like、uh, consum consuming、uh, natural produce, and the vitamins is inside the food you you consume, and it may take time to. Uh, develop the digestion、uh, system, but、um, in the long run, it's very likely that you will、uh, enjoy doing what you are doing, and the vocabulary development will naturally、uh, happen in this approach.